Okay, so I'm going to solve some examples of doing ray diagrams. So remember, your three principal rays are the parallel through the focal point, and then the opposite of that, the focal point through the parallel, and then straight through the center. But for every single one of these, you can just do ray 1 and ray 3. You don't have to do ray 2, right? You can get by with just these two, and you can do them every time. So I'm going to do this first one, and I'm going to draw ray 2 just because I'm going to be difficult like that. But again, you don't have to. So... Here's a ray diagram for this one outside of the focal point of a converging lens. So here's ray one, parallel to the principal axis through the focal point. Ray two is through the focal point and then out parallel to the principal axis and then ray three straight through the center. And you can see they all meet right there. So that means that my image is gonna be right there. And this is going to be a real image because it's inverted. Okay. So how about this one? Now we're inside the focal point. So if you remember converging lens, you go inside the focal point, it changes. So here are the three principal rays for this one. Okay. So ray one goes parallel and then through the focal point. Ray 2, you don't have to draw this one, right? But I'm showing you. Ray 2, if you draw a ray that would come through this focal point, comes up here, it's going to come out parallel, right? Because of Snell's Law, a ray that comes in parallel will go through the focal point, so you can just flip this around. But again, you don't need ray 2. You could get by with just doing ray 1, parallel focal point, and then ray 3, straight through the center. So if you follow these rays back, they all meet right about there. And so you can see that in this case you get an upright image. And if the image is upright, that means it's a virtual image. So let's look at a special case with converging lenses. So instead of doing this one, that's done because it just moves inside. It's still going to be a real image because it's outside the focal length. I'm going to put this object right on the focal point. And let's draw a ray diagram for this object that's sitting right on the focal point. In this case, you notice I can only do ray 1 and ray 3. I can't do any like tricks or anything to get ray 2 because ray 2, this is sitting right on the focal point, right? So a ray would have to go like parallel to the axis, which should kind of show you that this is a messed up situation, right? And if you look at these two lines, these two lines are parallel, right? If I continue these lines down this way and this way, they're never going to meet. They're just parallel. So in this case, when you have an object sitting right on the focal point, you get no image. That's a special case. If you have a converging lens, or a converging mirror for that matter, if you're right on the focal point, your object is, you get no image. Outside of the focal point, you get a real image. Inside of the focal point, you get a virtual image, right? But if you're right on here, none of these rays can ever cross, so it won't focus, so you get no image. Okay, diverging lens. So again, I'm going to skip ray 2, because ray 2 is dumb, and I'm just going to do ray 1 and ray 3. So... Here's this first example. So in this case, here's ray one, parallel, focal point, right? But in this case, because it's a diverging lens, I go away from the near focal point. So I lined up my ruler with this point and it diverges away. And then my second ray, I'm sorry, my third ray still stays the same. It just goes straight through the center, right? And so if you follow these two rays back, ray one looks like right there that it crosses ray three. And so, there's my image, right? And again, because this is a diverging lens, diverging lenses, all the images are going to be virtual, right? So they should end up upright. All right, so let's try one inside the focal length and see if it makes a difference like it did with the converging lens. Here's my diagram for this one. So here's ray one, right? It goes parallel and then it diverges from the antifocal point here. And here's ray 3 straight through the center again. And they meet right there. So still a virtual image because it's upright. It's just gotten a little bit larger compared to there. Right? And so if you remember diverging lenses, they always make virtual images. And all it does is shrink it depending on how far it is. Okay? So ray diagrams for lenses are easy, right? As long as you remember ray 1 and ray 3, right? If you want to be extra, you can do ray 2. But you can get by just doing these two.